That's right, everybody. We've got something different for you today, and I'm not even sure we can fix it. Does this take you back or what? What you're looking at here is a 1988 Cutlass Cruiser station wagon. And wow, like this takes me back to my childhood, seeing these cars on the road. And they are all but gone around here in our area in Ontario because they've all rusted away. And this one has actually made it. It is a survivor. It is what most of us here would call Ontario Mint. So it's rusty, but it's not rotten. And a, a little old lady owns this vehicle. And what has happened is she's had it at a few shops and they haven't been able to figure out uh, how to replace the lower bushings on the control arms. I thought, you know what, why don't we give a stab at it? We've got some people that we can kind of turn to and if we need to get new bushings made, we can have that done. So without further ado, let's get this thing onto the hoist and let's see what this thing looks like underneath. Just so you guys know, this car has 154,000 kilometers on it. So just under 100,000 miles. And uh, underneath it has been severely coated with undercoating to protect it from rusting, which is a good thing. I could see the frame here, the cradle that holds the engine up, the subframe, I guess, has, uh, has been replaced one, once in a while. There's been fixes done here. And uh, the bushings are indeed shot in these lower control arms. Like uh, just looking at them, they look to be in pretty bad shape. Every time I look at something on this car, it just kind of like, again, takes me back and it makes me think like, wow, like look at these, these wheels. So in 1988, these are steelies that were disguised as, you know, aluminum wheels, I guess, or, or, or wheels that look good. Like check this cap out. It's just, it's, it's crazy. And like the little cutouts here with these little chrome, chrome yeah. pockets on them, little chrome trim around it. So it, it looks cooler than it really is. And oh, wow, check out what is going on there. This suspension doesn't look like it's been touched in a very long time. She's a little crusty. So first up here is we are going to disconnect this sway bar and have it come down a bit because by the looks of it, to access the control arm nut and bolt, you have to remove this. And I know some of you may be wondering, why on earth would a little old lady want to continue to drive her Cutlass when there are so many new cars on the road, so many better cars per se, but you know what? Some people like old cars, some people like the same thing. And I think that's why she continues to invest money into this car and drive it because she likes it. It's been probably with her for a very, very long time. And part of the family now. Exactly. Next up here, we want to separate the ball joint from the hub. I've removed the nut and bolt without go through it. And place your bets here. Is this going to move or oh, not? Wow, look at it. It's coming out. That's incredible. Man, I thought this stuff was all going to be rotted in there, but now that we know we have movement there, that's a really, really good thing. However, there's a peculiar thing going on here. There's a bolt in here for this side of the control arm, but there's no nut access to the nut. I thought pulling the sway bar off here, you'd have that. Well, like a real genius, I didn't check up top to see if there was a relief for the nut and to, to access the nut. And of course it's there, except you can't get a wrench in here. It's like the absolute worst. You can't see, you know, in the eighties, you'd think somebody said, oh, let's just cut a relief right here and it'll be so much easier to access. Like if you look up front, yeah, I was gonna look, say. At, look at over here. Yeah. Oh, look, look how easy that is to access there. I've already loosened this guy cause they cut a beautiful relief. But in the rear here, they're like, no, we're gonna make you fight for this and curse and swear. All right, so I've got my really long uh, closed ended wrench in there right now. I moved the steering rack all the way over so that the inner tire rods facing in and I feel like I just have the slightest grip on it. Oh, see, it just slipped off again. Oh, it's slipping off now. Oh my God. 
It just won't hold. My goodness. Okay, so after a two-man effort there, I was holding the wrench and Dave was turning the ratchet. There is the bolt. It's a terrible design. I'm gonna say that again. This is such a terrible you design. You try to do a good deed. Yeah. We're not charging this old lady any money. We're just having a bit of fun with our cutlass cruiser and now uh, things are going sideways. I, I kind of figured it would, you know? I kind of figured it would. But, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna need a magnet to get this thing out. And this side, because it's got this access point, look at that! I was able to remove it in less than five seconds. There's so much crust. Oh, okay. Now I should just be able to oh, yeah. drop that out. And look at, look at this. These are fully goners. So I just yanked out the other side and the bushings on this, the driver's side, man, they are even worse. Like, look at that there. That is trashed. Over here, this is trashed. Like, it's it's right done. So, um, the, the backstory on this is, though, that apparently finding these control arms is, like, really, really difficult. What we're going to do is have a look at what's available out there maybe order because like really a lower a new lower control arm is the way to go so if we can order those up and they fit right in then we'll be golden and if we can't from what we've been told is you know we just need to make some custom bushings to to replace these which we could do i'm just looking at it and these are so crusty it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to try to push them out so um, let's just stop here. I'm gonna do a bunch of research, bring in some lower control arms, and then we can kind of get back at it. So a couple days has gone by, and we still have a very rusty control arm. You can't actually buy these new anymore. So they are no longer available, which means we had to resort to finding bushings. And luckily, luckily, Ivan uh, over at Ivan's Auto Service said, listen, I, I, I did a reach out on Instagram and he said, I may actually be able to get these for you. And sure enough, he was able to get us these bushings. So you can see these are the right ones. We hope they're gonna fit up. I, I'm pretty sure they will. That was kind of the whole um, issue that uh, another shop had is they weren't sure that the original ones were gonna bolt up in here. Wow, this one is mega co corroded. Man, I hope we can get this guy out here. This is, I, I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. So now what I'm gonna do is come in, drill some holes, and then hopefully I can get the, uh, the metal sleeve out of the middle. And I am using one of these drill bits that has like, I don't know, teeth on the side, and it actually kind of like cuts and grinds at the same time, so it's pretty perfect for this. Oh, there she goes. Well, that's good. Wow. So you guys can see here, like this is really, really rusty, but I'm hoping we're still gonna be able to press this out. You can see it's, it's, it's not terrible. It is, of course, surface rust, but I'm just gonna clean this up just a tad here before we get on to cutting it. goes and look at that the crazy thing is at first when I looked at these I thought there was a metal sleeve in the middle but there actually isn't so the bushing has a lot of the structure that holds this control arm together here on the outside which uh, is certainly I don't know I'm not very gonna say design. I never seen yeah like this, this seems very 80s to me it's a GM 80s yeah. thing I think yeah. yeah it certainly is but yeah like look at that whoa this thing was like fully corroded through here, so it's certainly a good thing we're going to replace it. But I guess the question right now is, does this look like it's the right bushing? It certainly does. It's a little bit thicker because that's because it's not rusted. Not rusted yeah. But look, yes, so that's gonna go in there. That's gonna work by the looks of it. So I'm just gonna spend some time just cleaning this up now. Bushing's in place. I've got my bushing 
installer tool right here and you can see I'm bracing the other side with a piece of metal because this arm does want to collapse. Like I said, there's nothing really holding it in place there. So now with this in place, this will slide in. Like most bushing jobs do require quite a bit of force, but you'll see with this one, like look, it just slides right in because there's so little surface area that you're actually working on. So it's, uh, it's quite remarkable like how easily this goes in here. Bam, look at that. That looks nice, looks like it's gonna work. Kind of crazy to think that this amount of rust came off that lower control arm. It's uh, it's a little bit insane. That's only half of a BT. Look on the table here. I know. Holy crap! Look at all of this. Okay, now that we've made the underside look like new again with some. Fluid Film Black, our favorite undercoating here. I think we are all but done. We need to just bolt on the wheels and get this thing on the ground. Well, I think it's fixed and it's really time to take it for a road test to make sure there's no weird noises, no clunks coming from the front end, but we've got to do one more good deed here, PT, because this car looks like it has not been washed in many, many months. It's covered in dirt and cobwebs and all that kind of good stuff. So let's give it a good wash, make it look like it's new again at least a little bit shinier. Man, look at this car, everybody. It is looking a lot cleaner, a lot shinier, and that Sonax spray and steel stuff works remarkably well. The car feels like it's been ceramic coated, and the water was beating off there nicely. Threw a little dressing on the tires because, let's admit it, old folks like the tire dressing. I'm not really a tire dressing guy, everyone, but it looks good on here. So, it looks new-ish. Time for a test drive. <laughs> oh my God, this thing's gonna need a full alignment. <laughs> <laughs> it just drives like a, a sailboat. I know. It's so like floating and okay. vague. Like you're okay, just... you ready? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Like, where do we? Where do we? How do you even describe driving this thing? <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! It's amazing. It is driving. It's like driving a, a, the definition of driving a boat. It really is. Um, it just floats down the road. The, the rear end. Waggles. Yes, like, yeah, just, it does. It, like, it, look, <laughs> you can look, move the steering wheel like 30 degrees before it, I think. It, it's, it's crazy. It just feels like it's just following me around like this. <laughs> There's this huge delay before you do anything either. Like oh you turn the wheel God. and then it turns. I know. Uh, it, this thing's going to need an alignment. Oh, the, yeah, the wheel's for sure. crooked. It's got an exhaust leak. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it is. The, like, look at this, this seatbelt. Oh, this too. poor little. Yeah, uh, look at this thing. This poor little woman. Yeah. Like, uh, look at this thing. It does not <laughs> seem to want to retract. No, I got to, like, no. Pull Mine it either. up here, and then you no. got kind of there. It goes. It's 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 all right. But yeah, these seats are like a Lazy Boy recliner. Oh man, they're I, so the, overstuffed. The it's, ride's not like from it, it's Cadillac esque, it, it but without the actual like smoothness. Yes. Um, but man, like this thing is full time capsule oh, from man. an era. Like ever? okay, 
stereo. Yes. No, no deck. Well, there like, there could have been a deck here, but right. But this is like this the, is, the stripper the model. model. Yeah. So we're talking about that. Like I love this kind of stuff. The bass oh, adjustment, yeah, yeah. the Sliders. treble, the front and rear speakers yeah. on the sides. Like yeah. there was some simplicity to this. There was. Uh, there are no power door locks. So no you power lock the windows door locks. Either, yeah. Doors ourselves. Yeah. No power windows. Like we've got crank. But yeah. you know what? It doesn't look at. I mean, it's it not doesn't gonna break feel bad. Like, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. She can raise this up and down yeah, without it's an good issue. Workout. It's good workout. I think there's air conditioning. Ooh, do we? It does say air conditioning. It does say air conditioning. Look, look at this. It's like, yeah. dude, I love that. Like a little switch Lever, to turn yeah. this stuff on. Let's Sliders. see. If this is, I hear things happening. And I'm afraid of a. Things are things are happening. Oh, it feels like it's blowing oh, cold God, air. It smells. Yeah, yeah. It, it smells it, musty, it, but it could smell bad. Yeah. But man, I don't like, know if I want that in my face. But anyways, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn that off. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool to see that. Yeah. <sighs> like non-power mirrors. Yeah. Like everything is so analog. I do love the column, yeah, the column shifter shifters as well. Cool, oh. Yeah. And we've got lights that have come on here, oh. so we're, we're either. Uh oh, our car is dead. On. She's dead on us here. Oh man. Oh, that means the battery I think is uh, is crapped out on us. Oh, uh oh. Boy. Oh boy. That's that's not great here. We're gonna have to figure something out. All right, guys. Well, uh, looks like I'm hiking back to the shop yeah, to get yeah. the so, booster. Yeah, Just so you know, the battery was really low on this thing. Mm -hmm. So I think we we probably have run into an issue where the battery is not charging properly. Yeah. So we we may need to source a battery here okay. to get this thing back up and running. All right. All right, we're back on the road. Thanks so, uh, to Luke over at 242 Customs. We broke down right in front of him. Yeah. He was able to give us a boost. Yeah. And we now have the booster pack in the pack mm -hmm. in the back. We're ready. Yeah, and a neat little thing for hazards, DP. I don't know, you guys aren't going to see this, but look at this, like yeah, this little, little column, knob. Yeah, knob there, that, yeah. That's yeah. on, and then you just pull it off. Again, crazy 80s nostalgia yeah. going on there. Let me floor it here for a second. Oh, the power. It's at least 50 horsepower. Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. This thing is so slow, it man. It is ridiculous. 2.8 liter V6. Yeah. I don't even know what it makes. It's probably got to like, be way under 100 oh, horsepower. Oh, and she died on us again. Did so, she really? Yeah, it's. I, I, see, it's something to do with the battery. We we do have a battery problem here. So once again, we're gonna jump out here, boost this thing, get it going again, and finish this test drive. I think sooner than we need to. <laughs> exactly. I think at this point it is safe to say this thing is going to need a battery 100%. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Now let's turn this thing around here. The bushings are done. I'm gonna say they're good because yeah. we know they're good. But uh, <laughs> judging no by how this thing, noises, no, no, judging by how this thing floats down the road, I, I can imagine it was significantly worse than this, oh, and it there was probably a, a ton of clunking. Yeah, so, must have been bad. Uh, job well done. I think we just need to reiterate one more time. There's a lot that potentially needs to be done on this vehicle. There is, uh, yeah. That is More than not, a battery. Yes, yes, yes. And we are not here to do that. It was certainly an experience. It was a blast to go back in time, to drive a vehicle of this vintage, to feel the floatiness, to feel what the 80s had. And where we are today, it's kind of remarkable. Like it even is. the jump between the 80s and the, you know, like the 90s vehicles yeah. is, is so tremendous. Uh, although, I mean, to be fair, this isn't exactly the high water mark of 80s cars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. This is, uh, GM at probably rock bottom. Like, did GM in the 80s, they got a little better in the 90s. They're pretty good now. Yeah. But man, this was not a This is where the Japanese for... came and started really mopping them up and with you can the vehicles. See why, like, because the, the gaps, like the panel gaps on this car, everything about this car really, I think, opened my eyes to why the Japanese really came in and dominated the way they did, because they just had way better quality and quality control, fit and finish, all of it really was uh, what is engineered at a higher level. But uh, anyway, happy we got to help somebody out. It was, it was certainly a trip down memory lane for me. And uh, it doesn't make me nostalgic for 80s GM cars, that's for sure. No, it certainly does not. All right, guys, that is going to be a wrap on this one. Please post in the comments. Let us know if you enjoyed this video. It was certainly a different one for us. We had um, different expectations originally when we got this car. We thought we'd be making poly bushings and trying to like concoct things to, to figure out that lower control arm. But sure enough, it turns out some replacement pieces fit up perfectly as they should. And we now have a fixed vehicle. It is now going to be heading back to the shop 
where uh, the lady dropped it off and I'm sure they're gonna do a bunch of other work like replace the battery, maybe fix that seatbelt and- uh, the Exhaust leak maybe. And the exhaust, yeah, there's a little bit of a laundry list of what needs to be done. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one where it's back to our regularly scheduled videos. <laughs> Get the seatbelt. Oh my goodness. Still rolling. Yep.